Hello everyone and welcome to our Jack Guide for Path of Champions. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, and let's get into it. We're going to start off with a brief overview of the champion and their playstyle so you can know if they're worth your time and resources. First up, we have Brash, one of the main keywords this deck utilizes. Brash works much the same way as Fearsome, except now a unit must have 3 or more health to block you, instead of 3 or more power. Next up we have Coins, a new mechanic added this expansion, which enables you to refill your mana on command. Quite handy for Path of Champions. Like the other champions this expansion, Jack also has a bit of a combo playstyle. You're often going to be wanting to play specific cards in certain orders to pull off different combos and win the game. And again, similar to the other champions this expansion, Jack and his deck have great scaling potential, so you don't have to worry about the opponent overpowering you as the game goes on, other than Aurelian Soul. Last up, we have Removal. Jack's deck and powers enable you to have massive amounts of consistent removal, both for single targets as well as groups of enemies. That about wraps up this overview. Let's head in game and dive deeper into Jack and his deck. In game now, you see we have Jack, the winner, level 23 and 3 stars. So Jack is a 4 cost, 4-5 four, with that Brash. Again, can only be blocked by units with 3 or more health. While you might think this isn't that good as most people don't really like Fearsome, Brash actually work, works much better because it's a lot easier to get a unit down below the 3 health threshold than it is to reduce their power down below the 3 power threshold. So with all your removal or poke damage, you can often just get units below that threshold and then attack and not have to worry about getting blocked. So this actually does work out quite well. He has the mechanic of strike, create a coin in hand. That's why you might want to write, run some strike relics on him. Four or five, when he levels up, he gets overwhelm. Now strike, create two coins in hand. When you refill mana, grant me one power for each mana refilled. So if he levels up, he scales out of control. His level up is you've spent 12 or more mana in a single round. This is a little difficult to achieve. You normally don't need to level him up in order to win the game though, but if he does level up, he will start scaling out of control and can really help you close out the game. His champion spell is Risky Venture, three costs slow, deal two to a unit, if it kills it, create two coins in hand, and then since it's the champion spell, it also creates a jack in your deck. And these are the coins right here. You have to have at least one mana to cast it, but it's burst, refill one mana, and coins stack. So the cost will always be one, but the more coins you get, the more mana it will refill. This will refill your standard mana gems first. If you have any overflow, it will also refill your spell mana, but it will prioritize your standard mana instead. For your star powers, for your 3 star, when you refill mana, give allies 1 power this round and deal 1 to all enemies. If you have the 1 star version of this, it's just give your allies 1 power this round. Now this is give, so this is temporary, but this still can help you boost up your power quite nice and deal a lot of extra damage. And also dealing 1 to all enemies, very very strong, especially with his 2 star. Plus 1 starting mana, when you gain the attack token, create a fleeting prize fight in hand. Now this isn't round start, it's just when you gain the attack token. So you can cheese this with rally and certain other effects to gain the attack token again and make another prize fight. That prize fight, one cost fast, an ally and an enemy strike each other, they can't drop below one health from this strike. So this is a great way to reduce down the enemy's health to a point where they either can't block your brash units or you get them low enough that you can just refill one mana and then your third star power will go off and be able to finish them off. Now this prize fight, you could use it on Jack. Jack, strike, create a coin. So with his star power, he's striking from the prize fight, he's creating a coin, then you can use that coin, refill one mana, it's going to deal one damage to all the enemy units and finish them off from the prize fight. So his two star powers work very well together, especially with the rest of his deck. Take a look at his starting deck now. We have a zero cost parlay, so slow, deal one to anything. If it kills it, deal one to the enemy nexus. Again, getting the enemy units low with that prize fight you're creating, since it can bring them down to that one health. Another way to finish them off, very nice. We have one cost pocket picker with shadow totem, so summon a ephemeral copy of me. Two power, one health, last breath, create a coin in hand. Pretty good one drop, especially with that shadow totem. Great for if you need another blocker, and you know that at the end of the round, it's going to at least die and give you that coin, so it works out quite well. We also have barnacles, so two cost equipment, one one, 
get an extra 1-1 one, one from the studded leather. This has brash and strike create a coin in hand. Great to put on any of your units and get that consistent coin generation, but extra good if you can put this on Jack because then he's already creating a coin when you strike with him. The barnacles will let you create another coin when you strike with him. And again, you can use that prize fight that you're generating every time you get the attack token and that can help you get a free strike off. So works quite well. Mad old Babs, get that five health from the giant spelt. Also later you get regenerating on this. Very strong two drop, can really block almost anything in the game, but it's also a great scaling unit. When you refill mana, grant me one power for each mana refilled. So that's grant, that is a permanent buff. So you put this on your board early throughout the entire game as you're refilling mana. Babs is also scaling up, great card. Really works like a better version of the Fey Blade Twirler in Yasuo's deck where when you stun a unit, it gets power. This works in much the same way, except it generally plays a bit better in my opinion. Here's another very interesting two drop. We have Knuckle. So elusive, 4-3 with that phage, very strong. But when I'm summoned, create a fleeting Mako in hand. So you see here, four cost, four, four with overwhelm. Strong unit, but then when I'm summoned, create a bull in hand. Again, fleeting. So 666 six, six, brash and then when i'm summoned rally so this will be a tough combo to pull off you're gonna have to have a decent amount of coins stockpiled before you try to play all three of them if you want to get that rally but to be honest knuckle is strong enough that if you get him in the early game especially once he gets that phage perfectly fine just to play him in your first couple rounds and then you do have the option and versatility to go and play the other units if you end up getting knuckle in the later game great card great versatility next up we have have five punch Pablo another great card so three cost four one a tune now this is a tune when you play him when I'm summoned refill one spell mana this works for your star power so it's going to deal if you have three stars one damage to all enemies when you play him as well as buffing up your whole board by one power works out quite well and then when I'm summoned create a fleeting prize fight in hand just like your star power Pablo is great to use the prize fight on since he already starts with one health it's not like it's health can get any lower so the prize fight you can use it on pablo great way to get the enemy unit down a little bit also later you're going to get an upgrade for pablo so that he also gets quick attack so the quick attack challenger combo very strong he'll be another great form of removal for you we also have here Risky Venture with the Charging Sigil 2 plus damage. So deal 4 to a unit. If it kills the unit, create 2 coins in hand. Great removal. And again, this is also your champion spell. So if you're using Grand General's Counterplan, this is what the extra copies of Jack will turn into. Then we have Jack at 4 mana and the Slippery Wave Rider at 5. This card, tough, elusive, and a tune. It's fine. I don't really like it. All the other cards in his deck are absolutely amazing. The Slippery Wave Rider is the only one that is really just fine. I normally cut this the first chance I get. It works out decent for you. It has a solid stat line. It is elusive, so that can be nice having an elusive blocker. And it also has a tune, which again, works out well for you. So it's not a bad card by any means, but all of your other cards are just really, really good. And this one is really just fine. Also, we've seen this in a couple of the decks, which I'm also not really that big of a fan of, but it does work here decently well. All right, let's go take a look at the relics. So first up, the strike relics work very well for Jack because strike create a coin in hand so you play jack on the board both of these will go off strike either an enemy or the nexus and so when you play jack you immediately get two coins that can work out very very well it also works out great if you get the common item in game where when you strike a unit you draw one card i've gotten that quite often on jack so when i play jack he strikes twice generates two coins and then also you draw two so keep an eye out if you're trying to run with this setup other relics that work decently well archangel staff round start refill your spell mana you do do have a decent amount of spells but also this again counts for your star power since you're refilling your mana the start of the round you are dealing one damage to all enemy units and buffing up your whole board by one power quite nice chemtech duplicator i haven't tried this yet myself but i think it should be good jack is a bit of a slower champion so especially if you're first leveling him up your games are probably going to go a little bit longer so being able to have the duplicator that will normally activate in your games doubling all of your spells should be pretty good i would not recommend recommend Crown Guard Inheritance 
Jack is pretty hard to level up, and that's not going to happen in most of your games. Uh, so this would be mostly a wasted relic. Although the few times he does level up, getting that rally would probably end the game. The Berserker's Buckle. Quite often you're going to be having Jack strike enemies and get hit back with that prize fight. So the Berserker's Buckle letting you scale up throughout the game could be quite good. Bounty Hunter's Renown. Again, best stat relic in the game. If you want to put extra stats on a unit, this is generally always the way you want to go. Grand General's Counter Plan. If you're feeling like you need some extra removal this can be quite nice as you'll then get your risky venture which as we saw in the relic this is going to do two extra damage so quite nice troll king's crown allies have overwhelm this is a great relic to throw on if you're wanting to end the games as fast as possible you're often going to have units with a lot of power and so making sure they're not getting blocked out and actually use that power to hit the nexus this will really speed up your games this is probably what i would put on for my third slot for common relics Lost Chapter, again, when I'm summoned to refill your spell mana, that immediately triggers your powers, which your star powers, which is quite nice. Essentially, it does Ravenous Hydra when I'm summoned to deal one to all enemies. You have that essentially built into your Lost Chapter if you have Jacks at three stars or Jack at three stars. Chameleon's Necklace, game start, create two copies of me in your deck. Really good if you're wanting to be able to always have the champion to play. And then if you have Jack already on the board, drawing more of them and those turning into a good removal spell, really not bad. Warmog's Armor, regenerating quite often with Jack with those prize fight you're going to be losing a lot of health potentially going down to one health fairly often so this is a decent way to save your champion all right that's it for the in game section let's go look at powers and support champions you might want to look out for in your adventures taking a look at powers here we have enfeebling strike when you damage an enemy reduce its power by the damage dealt since you have so much removal in your kit being able to slowly reduce down everyone's power works out quite well crush allies have overwhelm again having all your units have overwhelm really great to have and this will really help your games end much sooner because your units don't have to worry about just getting blocked out and losing all of their extra power the best defense allies have attack grow my health to match my power with jack and your units normally your units are going to have a higher power than health so this is going to help increase their survivability but also with jack normally you are temporarily boosting your unit's power so attacking with that boosted power will give you even more health which can work out to be quite strong next up we have can't stop won't stop so i'd normally try not to shout out epics too often but this one just works so well for jack allied buffs except barrier are permanent again most of the buffs you're giving your units are temporary temporary for the round but being able to make those all permanent will really help your units scale out of control. Gearing up, game start, summon two armed gearheads. Those are units that start out as 1-1 one, one with quick attack and augment. Augment being the keyword that their attack increases when you play created cards. With Jack, you have a decent amount of created cards that you're playing, so these will be able to scale up quite nicely. Also, since they already start at one health, using prize fight on them isn't bad, as their health can't actually get any lower. And then we have domination, round start, rally. Always a good power, but works out even better with Jack because, again, his one star power, you create that prize fight every time you get the attack token. So since you're getting the attack token every round, you're always making one every round, which is quite nice. Then last up for the group of powers, you've seen my guides, you've seen this slide many times. Wild Inspiration, your created cards cost one less. Jack, you're making a decent amount of created cards both your coins, your prize fights, the extra units from Knuckle. There's just a lot of different cards you are creating, so this will help reduce that down. Spell Slinger, your spells cost one less. In general, a better version of Wild Inspiration. However, this doesn't affect units, whereas Wild Inspiration, if you're creating units, like you are with the Knuckle card, then Wild Inspiration can be a little bit better in that regard. And then Sorcery, Round Start, Refill Your Spell Mana. Again, great power on everyone, but for Jack, since you're refilling your mana, that triggers your star power, dealing damage to the entire enemy board and buffing up your own units as well. All right, let's take a look at support champions now. Now, this is by no means a exhaustive list. I just wanted to point out some champions that you might want to keep an eye out for and what effects you might really want to look for when you're playing Jack. So first we have Empower. Units with Empower have special effects that will activate once you can get their power to a certain level. With Jack, you're able to boost up units' powers, and so you can normally trigger those Empower effects pretty easily. Next, we have Attune. When you play a unit that has that keyword it refills one spell mana since you're refilling mana triggers all of your star powers 
works really well. Then we have strike. This is especially important for Jack as when he strikes, he creates a coin in hand and you can make that go to two coins if you level him up or if you put the barnacle equipment on him. If you have him leveled up and have the barnacle equipment, then every strike he's creating three coins, which is just absolutely massive. So any champion that lets you get extra strikes in, works out quite well. So first we have Kale. Her deck works with Empower. Normally you can level Kale up quite quickly and she can really end the game for you as she gets double attack and overwhelm when she levels up. And then for Toon, we have Nami. Nami works great with refilling your spell mana. You'll be able to level Nami up quite quickly. She'll be able to buff up your board, but then all of her units, when you play them, they trigger that Atun power, which then again triggers all of your keywords, works really well. Then for Strike, we have LeBlanc, although there are a lot of different champions of some sort of strike mechanic. LeBlanc works out quite well. She already is a very aggressive play style and will really help you close out the game as fast as possible. All right, that's it for the support champions as well as this guide. Again, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.